Hey guys, and I hope you're all doing well. And today I'm going to review one more additional anti hilar shampoos that I was not aware of when I did make my video two days ago about hilar shampoos and potentially if it one, one should add them to the treatment. And this is a shampoo from Brian Johnson, who is a founder of uh, Project Blueprint and known for anti-aging treatment and uh, someone who wants to reverse aging. So I want to review his shampoo that I become aware of. And it is called Peptide Shampoo. It is a shampoo that is quite high in the price range. It is around 59 USD. So if you, for example, join the waiting list, it will show the pricing for it. On the bottle itself, the shampoo, it is not large bottle. Like it's a small bottle around 100 ml or less than four ounces of the shampoo in this bottle. And when it comes to the shampoo, I want to review the ingredients in it and talk about if it could potentially be worth the price. If you look at the ingredients um, on the description for it, we can see that it has uh, different peptides in it. It also has potentially some antioxidant uh, benefits. It also has a, a gentle cleaning effect and it is designed by experts according to the description. It may boost hair appearance by promoting a thicker on fuller hair over time when one keeps using it. And it is formulated without potential triggers that can be potentially an issue for some of you guys who have sensitive scalp, for example, or scalp inflammatory problems, and it is also safe for colored hair. So it all sounds quite nice uh, and quite well. So uh, let's take a look at how one should use it. And uh, if you click here, you can see that the app application time for it is for 30 to 60 seconds, which is quite short, like because usually if one is having, for example, shampoos that contains a lot of ingredients that has different effect on, let's say, DHT blockers, uh, growth stimulants, uh, on inflammatory benefits. It has to be kept on the scalp for longer, usually for three to five minutes. But this shampoo is only for 30 to 60 seconds, which, uh, unless there are very uh, potent uh, absorb, like a, if the ingredients are highly absorbable, then it is something that could make sense. But usually, shampoo should stay longer on the scalp or any type of optical should stay longer on the skin to actually have benefits from it. And uh, that's one thing. And also a use of it two to three times a week. Let's take a look at the ingredients. It unfortunately doesn't state inactive ingredients, which is also very important. Like we want to know what components are used to hold the shampoo together. Right? We can only see active components in the shampoo, uh, in the formulation of the shampoo. And we can see that there is ha has a different peptide complex. And uh, again, I would like to see what type of peptides there are. Amount of them, for example, can be highly beneficial. Then it has uh, agents for uh, for increasing uh, like vascularity, uh, like uh, activity, uh, which is fine because it likely helps to make that peptides is more absorbable. It also has a turmeric, which is more like a derivative from turmeric. And turmeric is something on turmeric as well. It's something that has potential benefits for inflammatory problems and potentially also for DHT angle. Caffeine, it is also something that we spoke about on our last video. Caffeine, it is something that often is added because it's an anti adrenaline anti-DHT. And it is often added to different channels, such as allopatine, for example, Revita. And also, I'm quite sure Foligain had also had caffeine in it. And menthol is more for making that fresh feeling to the scalp, more about uh, like a tingling effect from, from the shampoo when you have used it. And arginine has potential benefits for the skin tissue itself. So overall, ingredients that, uh, like active ingredients that are kind of okay, like uh, they are quite good in terms of uh, addressing different issues of what can occur in terms of the healers. But I still would like to see also inactive ingredients, right? Because uh, Brian Johnson always talks about transparency, about to see what else is containing, for example, in supplements, in uh, green powders, for example. So I would like to see the same also in this kind of shampoo that he has now uh, realized. And um, additionally, because like what is important is that we want to know what else is used in terms of, for example, sulfate, so what is used instead of them, right? Because there has to be some kind of cleaning agents because if it's just a shampoo that doesn't have a cleaning effect, it's not going to work, right? Like, for example, if one is having, for example, more like a flakiness on the scalp or more seborrheic diet issues, for example, or higher fungal activity, like uh, shampoo without cleaning effect is just make, going to make those conditions worse, right? So we want to know what exactly is used in terms of sulfates. And also when it comes to sulfates, there is different types of sulfates. Like, for example, as I mentioned on, on our last video, is that, for example, nioxin is using harsh sulfates. And the same, for example, with allopatin. They are using harsh sulfates that can affect scalp environment and cause, for example, the scalp gets out of balance. 
but for example, Rita is using more mild sulfates, right? So we always have to keep in mind that there are different types of sulfates, like not all of them are the same. And also, um, when it comes to this shampoo here, like it also mentions that it doesn't use any silicones. Like silicones may not necessarily be that big an issue because there are multiple types of silicones. Like some of them can be problematical, right? Some of them would require several washes to wash them out and they can start to build up around the follicles and cause issues and even can affect the minoxidil. Like there is, for example, uh, like in this label on, on the original formulation of minoxidil, there was actually stated that you should use silicone free shampoo when you use minoxidil. Mm -hmm. But uh, additionally, like we can also look at, for example, Revita. Like Revita has a silicone that is uh, quite easy to wash out, like this one here. Like Region 4 has more resistant silicone, which is more harder to wash out. Right. So, for example, if you are using region pores, then you likely need a shampoo that is more clarifying to wash it out. But Revita, for example, it is something that has a silicone that is more easy to wash out. And also, uh, in terms of uh, like what you get from active ingredients, for example, Revita also has caffeine. It has also a, a, like a, a peptide complex in it, as arginine in it. Uh, and it has multiple of those ingredients that are also found in uh, Brian Johnson shampoo, but they also list up all the inactive ingredients. And you can see that there are a lot of components that are used to keep the shampoo together. Right? So th this is the other thing. So that's why I want, would like to see actually what else it contains in Brian Johnson shampoo. And uh, additionally, of course, fragrance, less identical fragrance is some uh, in some cases album because it can cause an effect, uh, for example, skin and cause sensitivities. Uh, so uh, that's also something we need to keep in mind. So uh, my take on this is that I would like to see what else it contains of inactive ingredients, and I also want to see ratios of active ingredients. So, for example, polygen, it does state what it contains, right, in terms of active ingredients. Like if we slow it down, you can see that it states actually it has a one percent of keto uh, keto uh, it, In this case, they have also minoxidil two percent, and so let's see, you can see one percent, right? So it actually uh, discloses what ratios of active ingredients are inside the shampoo and uh, that's something that is also important for us for example if you are dealing with the helas we want to know what what else it contains and additionally like if, uh, if you are following brian johnson you know that he is also using topical max deal topical dust trade right so, so he is also using other components to it it's not just about the shampoo for example right because as i mentioned in the last uh, video about shampoos shampoos has a limited limited effect right unless your hair loss is very recent or you want to for example address specific type of problem right so so shampoos has limitations and you want to always work on the reasons why your hair are falling out right what, what is causing the ups out of balance for example why scalp biome is not in the state where it should be why there is for example online issues so you want to work on those factors you don't don't want to just rely on the shampoo right you don't want to just rely on the one product and uh, also brian johnson has has been doing treatment to address this here as multiple angles so it, it just doesn't relate in the shampoo all right guys thanks for watching this video let me know in the comment section what you think about this shampoo is it something you're going to try out is it a game changer do you think it will deliver what it promises let me know in the comment section so you can catch up there